It was April 29, 1964. Ten-year-old Sharon Stahl, her eight-year-old sister Robin, and another classmate were outside in the Lowell schoolyard on their half-hour lunch break. Almost right away, whilst commencing their break, they noticed an egg-shaped thing hovering high in the sky above the elementary school. None of the other kids in the schoolyard seemed to take notice of it. Eventually, Robin and the classmate grew bored, but Sharon didn't, and she continued to watch for five or ten more minutes. That's when her eyes started to burn. Over the course of the next 30 minutes, she continued to periodically look up at the craft, though her eyes were bothering her. When the noon break ended, the kids slowly filed back into their various classes. Within a half hour, Sharon, whose eyes were now red and causing her great discomfort, asked her fourth grade teacher if she could be excused to go wash out her eyes. When she returned from the bathroom, the irritation persisted and Sharon's teacher instructed her to see the school doctor. After a short check, the concerned school doctor quickly called Sharon's mother, Maxine, and recommended that Sharon be immediately taken to the Batten Hospital for a thorough examination. Upon arriving at the hospital, Sharon's face had gotten puffy and turned a strange blue-red color. According to Sharon, her face felt like it was burning. She was treated and told not to allow any sunlight to touch her face. Maxine was instructed to keep the blinds drawn in their home and to protect Sharon's inflamed eyes and eyelids from light. When the attending physician inquired about what might have caused this, Sharon told him about what she and her friends had seen in the schoolyard, the UFO that hovered over the school. Maxine noted that while the doctor seemed to brush off her UFO explanation, he was still at a loss to explain how such a thing could happen. I remember him remarking about how such a short exposure to the sun, even at the brightest time of day, would under normal circumstances be insufficient to cause such burns and inflammation. Maxine told this to the Albuquerque Tribune, which did a follow-up on the story four months later. Though the most intriguing aspect of the story was the dramatic transformation Sharon had undergone since the sighting. According to Maxine, one month after the sighting, Sharon had grown five inches and gained 25 pounds. A while ago, she was just a child who liked to play with dolls and paper cutouts. Now she is suddenly mature and grown up, cooks meals by herself, cleans house, and takes care of the younger children. At the time of the sighting, Maxine confirmed that Sharon had been 4 foot 8 inches tall and weighed about 85 pounds. Now Sharon is 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighs 110 pounds and is still growing. My daughter had outgrown all her clothes and quickly outgrows new garments and shoes. I'm so confused. I don't know what to believe. Maxine added, I know she definitely saw something in the sky that day, but I don't know what. It has been a nightmare ever since. I wish I had let her play hooky that day. While it is possible that Sharon's phenomenal human growth happened naturally, it does seem to fall outside the norm. Generally, most children grow two and a half inches over the course of a year. The fact that she grew five inches in roughly 30 days is definitely bizarre. Did her sighting of the object in the schoolyard that day somehow facilitate her sudden growth spurt and change in behavior, or was it merely a coincidence? In his book, Wicked This Way Comes, author Timothy Green Beckley noted that Sharon Stull's case was the only one he was aware of in which a human being experienced rapid height transformation, possibly due to the sighting of a UFO. This, however, is not true. A man named Timothy claims that, in the late 90s, he and three friends observed a UFO, which caused them to not only lose time, but lose height as well. Late author Bud Hopkins was involved with the case, 
which happened in Minnesota and was discussed on a January 8, 2018 episode of Ground Zero Radio with Clyde Lewis. Tim recalled that he, his brother, and two co-workers had just gotten off work and were heading home when they observed a strange glowing object. They decided to stop and investigate. This would set into motion a bizarre series of events. We saw the UFO, all four of us, just before noontime, and in like a flash, it was nighttime. We were amazed because it happened so suddenly. The stars were... I never saw so many stars in my life. It was like they were so close and huge, we could just reach out and touch them. There was a full moon to the left of us, and this craft was in front of the wharf, at the end giving off a glow. Scientifically minded, I walked over and I walked up to the darn thing, and what happened was, all of a sudden, the sun was breaking, like in mere moments, like under an hour. When Tim and his brother eventually returned home, they were shocked to discover that they had actually been gone for two days. Their mother had become concerned when they didn't come home or check in. The strangest thing of all was the fact that Timothy, his brother, and the two co-workers all experienced a rapid decrease in height. I was 5'11". When I came home, I was 5'9", age 18 and my brother also reduced in size, and Wally and his girlfriend Jane. Not just shorter, but reduced in size all the way around. They looked my size score, and I was 5'11". They measured, you know, at the hospital. I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. My mother was in shock. All my friends were in shock. I had MRIs, and I was never told that I had any bones removed, and Wally... He was a small guy to begin with. His family was in such shock. Now they had just got through building their dream home and they were in such shock that the father said, we're moving. According to Tim, Wally and his family did indeed move away from the area. Interestingly, Wally's father's decision to move might not have been of his own making. It's entirely possible that he was frightened off as Timothy noted that not long after the bizarre incident, he was visited not once, but twice by two men who claimed to be UFO investigators. Tim recalled one of the men saying to him, We know more about you than you know about yourself, something he found to be quite unnerving. Had Wally's father also been visited by these men? In ufology, there are a number of cases in which witnesses are burned by UFOs, made blind by UFOs, and at least one instance I'm aware of, of a man being melted by a UFO. But these cases of people rapidly increasing and decreasing in size following a UFO sighting are more rare and therefore a lot more interesting, as it leads into more fringier areas of the phenomenon including people being cloned and replaced by aliens. Granted, that's a whole other video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Later. <laughs>